Let's take a look at the structures and organelles of the animal cell. Ready? This tutorial is brought to you by your instructor, Scientist Cindy. That's me. Meet Michelle the cell. Human cells have three main parts, the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm, and the nucleus. The plasma membrane, or cell membrane, works a little bit like our skin. It keeps the outside out and the inside in. The cell is surrounded by the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a little like our skin. This is an animal cell. The inside and outside of the cell is separated by the cell membrane or plasma membrane. Things that are outside the cell are considered extracellular and things inside the cell are considered intracellular. The cell membrane has a very important job to do. It is selectively permeable, allowing only for certain substances to pass through. In this way, it regulates what goes in and what comes out of the cell. In other words, it regulates transport. The cell membrane is selectively permeable due to its structure. The cell membrane is composed of a double layer of phospholipids. A phospholipid consists of a phosphate group with two fatty acid chains. The head group is the phosphate group, and it is hydrophilic or water-loving. The fatty acid tails are hydrophobic or water-fearing. The polar hydrophilic heads face the extracellular fluid and the cytoplasm. The non-polar hydrophobic fatty acid tails face inward towards each other away from the intracellular and extracellular fluids. Integral membrane proteins can shift around within the membrane. Think about a tub full of rubber duckies. The rubber duckies float on top of the water in a mono layer. Now, put a kid in the tub. The duckies gently float out of the way. The baby can freely move around the tub and the duckies will move around to allow that movement. This is kind of how proteins and other molecules can move around within the plasma membrane. There are two major classes of membrane proteins, integral membrane proteins and peripheral proteins. Integral membrane proteins are transmembrane proteins, which are going to span the extracellular and intracellular sides of the plasma membrane. Integral membrane proteins or transmembrane proteins are going to have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. Peripheral membrane proteins are only going to span the extracellular side of the cell membrane. The cytoplasm includes the cytosol or intracellular fluid and the cytoplasmic organelles. In other words, the cytoplasm would include everything between the cell membrane and the nucleus. The liquid inside of the cell membrane, but outside of the nucleus, is called the cytosol. The nucleus is the control center for the cell. It houses genetic information in the form of DNA. The DNA functions as an instruction manual for how the cell will develop and for what proteins should be made. The proteins can then carry out the various functions needed for the cell. The nucleus also has a darkened spot called the nucleolus. The nucleolus functions to make ribosomes. Ribosomes function as the site of protein synthesis. Once the ribosomes are made inside of the nucleus at the region of the nucleolus, they leave the nucleus and travel to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Some ribosomes will end up in the cytosol. These ribosomes are called free ribosomes. Ribosomes function as the site of protein synthesis. Once these proteins are made at the ribosomes, the proteins then travel to the Golgi body for packaging and shipping.
the mighty mitochondria is like the powerhouse of the cell. It makes energy for the cell in the form of ATP. Another organelle is the lysosome, and it functions a little bit like our stomach does for us, by digesting unwanted biomatter. Peroxisomes are like a toxic waste dump for the cell. They function to detoxify the cell. Thanks for watching.